Hi, Nathan again. For the second presentation on ancient and historic games, by request, I'm presenting a dice game. And I've chosen a game called Mia, sometimes called Meyer or Maya. That is, it's a game that I presented as part of a workshop on dice in general, on their history and spiritual and cultural significance. Dice themselves have a very long old history and even the six-sided die, the common cubicle dice that we know of, goes back at least 3,000 years based on artifacts that have been found. Whereas dice in different forms, cubes, polyhedra, even sticks that can be thrown, two-sided sticks, or three-sided in some cases, uh, go back at least 8,000 years, again based on physical artifacts found and confirmed on dating. So, Mia is played with two six-sided dice, and it can be played with modern standard cubicle dice. Although, there's a thought based on the rules that they were probably played with a different kind of dice. That is, oblong, rectangular dice, which would be twice as long on four faces as they are on the small face. And on the small faces, were likely the numbers one and two, with three, four, and five, and six on the other four faces. That means that the numbers one and two would come up less likely, which would explain an interesting quirk in the rules for the values of different roles. More on that when I discuss the game itself. But I should note that uh, perfectly sided, balanced dice like we know of now were less likely before modern machining and dice were assumed to be irregular in one of a number of ways, especially if they were made out of, say, the knuckle bones of sheep. But even carved shaped dice were assumed to have their quirks. Mia is thought to be Germanic in origin, that is coming from the Germanic regions of Northern Europe and Scandinavia. These rules, as I presented, come through Denmark, and are as presented on a website called Lore and Saga, which I've put a link in the description below. If you'd like to go and check out that description, uh, I'll give a quick, simple, and hopefully clear version of my understanding of those rules. For setup, what you need are, of course, two dice, six ciders, and a pot to throw them in. I just borrowed a cup and lid from some dishware. And you want this because players need to be able to throw the dice, look at them without anyone else seeing, and then cover them again before passing them on to the next player. This is because Mia is a bluffing game. Originally a gambling game, although the rules I'm presenting will make it a little less for money and a little bit more of a winner-take-all game. Uh, it is very similar, you'll find, to certain games like Liar's Dice, or even to some degree like Poker, in that you are daring other players to decide if the role that you've declared is accurate or false. That is, do they call you a liar or accept what you've said? Other than that, what you might need is counters or a piece of paper to record lives for each player. Each player starts with three lives, which are lost as they make mistakes during the game. As I mentioned, you can use simple counters, which help, and they can be returned as a player loses one or more lives, or tick marks on a piece of paper will keep track of lives lost. Starting a game of Mia, the first thing you'll need to do is decide which player goes first. Now, this is not as important or as advantageous as in some games, so it really can be whoever you want. But if you absolutely must have it decided fairly, you can roll the dice for it. Whoever gets the highest roll can go first. That first player takes the pot, puts the dice inside, and rolls. Then they take a look at what they've rolled, showing no one else. Okay, now I'll tell you, just so you know, I rolled a five and a four. Now the next thing the player does after they've rolled is declare their role. They can choose to tell the truth 
and say exactly what they rolled. Or they can lie and choose to declare a roll that is higher or lower than their actual roll. Now, rolls in Mia are declared not as a sum, but as the two different numbers on the dice. So I rolled a five and a four, and I will declare it, if I'm being truthful, as five, four. Always put the higher number first, just for simplicity's sake. If I wanted to declare a higher roll, I could say six, four. Or if I wanted it to be lower, I could say four, three. Toward the end of the rules, I'll discuss the scoring. Like I say, this is a unique feature of Mia, so understanding what is meant by higher versus lower takes a little bit of knowledge. Now, rolls are valued according to a scale, the highest of which is the roll 2-1, which is called Mia, where the game gets its name, or Meyer. Uh, if a player has rolled Mia, they obviously can't say anything higher. They could say something lower, or they can declare Mia instead of saying 2-1. We'll come back to that because Mia is a special role, being the high one. Now, once a player has made their declaration, they pass the pot on to the player to their left, clockwise around the table or circle or space. The next player now has three choices. So and we're into the next part of the play. They can accept the role and say, yes, I accept that's what you rolled and then roll again themselves. If that player rolls, they must try to roll something higher. So, even if they don't roll higher, they're going to have to claim they did, or else it's not legal. Let's try that. I rolled six, five. So it is higher. So, I don't have to lie. I could say six, five, and pass it on. However, instead of accepting a roll, alternately the next player, after the first one is rolled, can say, I think you're lying. I'm going to call. Now at that point, they check the dice that have been rolled to see if it's true or not. So before, if the person said, 5-4, the next player calls and says, I think you're lying. They look. Nope. It's 5-4. The player that called the lie loses a life. The same happens if the first player declared something lower than what they rolled. If they chose to lie but say something lower. So they say they rolled the 5-4 and they said 4-3 instead, which is a lower valued roll. The next one says, I call. They check it. Even though it was a lie, they lied lower and the player who called the second player loses a life. The third possibility is if the first player rolling and claiming claims something higher than they had rolled. Said they rolled a 5-4 and they say it was 6-4. The next player decides to call, say, I think you're lying. Nope, it's 5-4, it's lower than you said. The first player loses a life. Their bluff was successfully called. So there's those three possibilities if a lie is called. Now, the second player receiving the pass has a third option, which is to accept and keep the roll. So let's say the first one rolled 5-4. They say 5-4. The next player, looking at the closed pot, thinking about it, says, I'm going to accept that and keep the roll. Now they don't have to try to roll higher. They're just keeping what's there. And if the player before you has declared Mia, you can't possibly roll higher. So you're either going to have to call their bluff or accept their roll. However, at this point, when the second player accepts the roll and passes the pot on to the next one to their left, now this will be the third player, that roll becomes theirs. They now own it. And the next player, if they call for a lie, it's between those two players, two and three. So... If it turns out it was a lie and it was wrong, it's not the first player that's penalized, it's the second for accepting it. However, if it was the truth, it's still the truth, it goes to the third person and they call, oh, it is 5-4. That third player loses the life instead. All right, we'll move on to the next part of play. 
All right. There's a couple other rules to consider as play goes around the circle. Generally, play passes from player to player to the left, as I've described. When a player calls out another player, regardless of the outcome, play passes back to the previous player. So in my previous description, it goes from first one to second, who calls. We'll say that it really was 5-4, and that player, the second one, lost a life. The pot goes back to the first player, who then rolls again. So this is going to make the second one maybe a little more leery about calling him out. Maybe not. However, when a player loses all three lives in the course of play, they are eliminated from the game. They step back out of the circle, back from the table, and they're out. In a two-player game, the last remaining player then is the winner. In a bigger game, it keeps getting smaller. Say, five players, then four, then three, then two, then finally, the one remaining. The last one standing is the winner. If the pot gets passed around the entire circle, that is, the first person rolls, and the pot goes to the second, and on to the third, and so forth, and everyone in the circle decides to accept and pass the roll, when it gets back around to the first player, the one who originally rolled it, they must then roll again, and they must try to roll higher. Or at least they have to declare a higher roll, whether they're telling the truth or not. So, as you can guess, as the circle gets smaller, this becomes more and more likely. The first person rolls, the next person, will say they roll a fairly high roll, like 6-5, past second, past to the third, back around to the first, now they've got to try to beat that roll. Again, declare that they did. The one exception is that special roll that I mentioned before, Mia. That's a 2-1 roll, declared as Mia, the highest possible roll. If a player rolls that or declares it, the next player to lose lives will lose two, not one life, but two regardless of who it is, whether it's true or false, whenever it gets called. So, for example, if player one rolls, we'll say, 1-1, one, one, but they declare it to be 2-1, Mia, and they pass it, the next player, if they call that a lie, they got them. The second player is going to lose two lives. Even though that's not actually what they rolled, it's what they called. Likewise, if they roll 2-1, but they declare, say, 2-2, two, two, the next player gets it, calls their bluff, reveals it's Mia, it's 2-1. Because the first player called something lower, now the loss of life is the second player. They're going to lose two lives. And similarly, if they rolled Mia, it really was Mia, and the second player says, no, I don't think so, I'm gonna call. They reveal, oops, it actually is the same as what was declared. The second player is going to lose two lives. So as you can guess, through a sequence of rolls, it's going to start going higher and higher and higher if nobody calls a bluff, until eventually it's going to get to have to be a call of Mia. So sometimes calling earlier prevents that from falling on you. You might also notice that if the pot is passed around, each person accepting the roll, and the first person did call Mia, when it get back, gets back around to them, they can't possibly claim a higher roll. That's an exception to the rule. In this case, the first player, the one who declared Mia and had it passed back to them with the same roll, can now just re-roll and declare anything they like. So possibly, no one wanted to risk being the one who declared that a lie. And they let it get back to the first player, who's now free, and they can roll again. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, it's a continuous game. The pot keeps going around the circle. Pass, re-roll, or call, and somebody is going to lose lives. 
the order of roles I mentioned, higher versus lower, is particular to the game. Now the highest possible role is Mia, 2-1, but below that come doubles, that is, rolling the same number on both dice. And in the original game rules, the highest valued double you could roll is 1-1. One, one. The next below that is 2-2, two, 3-3, two, 4-4, three, three, four, four, five, 5 and 6-6. Six, six. I'll put up the order of rolls above me. Uh, note that Mia being the highest roll, 2-1, followed by 1-1 one, one, and 2-1, is evidence that 1s and 2s were less common to be rolled, and therefore those were less likely rolls and higher valued. For modern variants, players may wish to reverse the order of the doubles. It helps make it make a little more sense and keeps higher toward the high end. So you could do it as 6-6-5-5-4-4-3-3-2-2-1-1. Six, six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. But again, doubles, being a less common outcome, are considered higher valued than the next tier down, which is two different numbers. Now these rolls are valued based on the first higher number. So they go in order 6, 5, 6, 4, 6, 3, 6, 2, 6, 1, then 5, 4, 5, 3, 5, 2, 5, 1, then 5, 3, excuse me, 4, 3, 4, 2, 4, 1, followed by 3, 2, which is the lowest possible roll. So, starting at the beginning, if you declare 3, 2, there's nowhere to go but up. Now, as I mentioned, you can play either variation of the scoring order. Just make sure that it's clear to everyone ahead of time which scoring you're using, uh, which order of rolls that is. And you might want to actually write it down. Uh, when I played this for the dice workshop, I actually printed out a few strips for each side of the table, listing the order of the rolls, so that nobody was going to be stopped having to think, oh, what's higher, what's lower, and possibly give away their bluff. They knew ahead of time. So you might want to try that the first few times you and your game group play the game. For this last part, I'm going to play through a sample game. Just three players, and we'll put them up as A, B, and C. Actually, going from here, A, B, C. I'll put them up in a moment. That's to help you see how the flow of play goes and how players lose lives and are eliminated. You also get an idea of how the scoring compares as well. So, let's start with A, who's going to be our first player. They roll. And it's actually 5-2. Take my word for it. Player 1 decides to just go with the safe thing and say 5-2. Goes to player B, who gets the pot. They look at it a minute and go, 5-2 is not very high. I'm pretty sure I can roll higher. They decide to roll. They accepted the first roll. Now they're going to try to re-roll. It's 5-4, which is actually higher. So let's say they go safe as well and say 5-4 and pass it on. Player 3 thinks this is too easy. Like it went from 5-2 to 5-4. No. I'm going to call that. That's a lie. They then check the dice. No, oh, it was 5-4. So now, player C is down a life, two left. Play goes back to player B as the last player preceding, before the, the bluff was called. So now they re-roll, starting a new sequence of rolls. It's 5-4 again. Is that likely? Well, if they call it, maybe it is. But they want it to be more difficult on player number two, or excuse me, player C at this point. So they're gonna say it was six, five. Next player gets it. No, they call that. They take a look, yeah, it's five, four again. That roll is lower than what was declared, six, five. So now it's player B's turn to lose a life. The pot goes back to player B. All right, they roll again. You can get stuck here, by the way, if somebody keeps successfully calling your bluff. It's 5-3 this time. They're going to say 5-2. Go ahead and see, see if that's right. C is letting it go now at this point. They're like, 
No, 5-3. I can do better. Let's just keep rolling. Now it's 6-2. Player C says 6-2. Passes it on. Now it's going back to player A. They've been told it's 6-2. Do they believe that? This might be a chance to almost knock out player C. But it's possible that's really what was rolled. It's hard to roll higher. Let's try it. 5-1, which is lower than 6-2. So I can't call that. They go, oh, 5-5. Five, five. Pass it on to B. Maybe. B accepts the roll and passes it on. C is going to take a chance. They both look shady. 5-5, five, five, huh? No, I'm going to call. Nope, it's 5-1. Because player B accepted and passed it on, they lose another life. They're down to one. All right. Now again, this goes back to the preceding player before the bluff was called. So now it's back at B again. 6-2. 6-2. All right. Six three. I'll accept that. It's six three. B takes it. B's like, nope, that was too quick a call. It's six three. Pass it back. Now, C's back with the pot with the roll they rolled having been passed through the other two players. So now they must re roll and they must declare something higher than six three. All right. Four, four. Now, that's what they see. They think about it a moment. They want to make this uncertain. Four, four. Well, I can either accept and pass it. I can call her bluff. Or I can re-roll and try to do better than four, four. That's a pretty high roll. You know what? I still don't think they're lying. I'm going to pass it on to B. You know what? I'm going to pass it again myself. Here, C. Roll better than your 4-4. Four, four. Okay. I'll do that. It's just a 5-1. But you know what? They're thrown off. I'm going to say, ah, it's now a 2-2, two, two, which again is that third highest possible roll under the standard scoring. It's 2-2. Two, two. Sure, it's a 2-2. Two, two. Player B says, no, uh-uh, no, you're both full of crap. I'm calling it. Nope, it's a 5-1. Player A finally loses a life. There it goes. We're at 2-1-2. Two, goes back to the preceding player, A. Let's roll again. 6-1. Uh, I'm going to say 6-1. Okay, I'm going to try to roll higher. 6-5. That's actually what was rolled. C decides they're going to call on that. It's not a 6-5. No, it actually is. Another life down. It's 1, 1, and 2. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Goes back to B. B is now the roller. So, they roll. Ha <laughs> ha! 2, 1. It actually is. Mia. Now, you're not supposed to shift the cup after you've rolled, so keep it upright. But actually, roll a 2 1. They look at it. They think about it a moment. Yeah. 
That's a 6-3, they declare. Pass it on to C. If they roll it, it's gone. They won't ever know. They could pass it. Maybe take out A. You know what? Might be higher. Okay, I accept that. Pass it on. 6-3. A decides, I'm going to roll it. That me is gone. They had a chance to catch people out. It's a 5-2. They say 5-2. The next one, I call their bluff and I'm wrong. I'm out of the game. All right, I'm going to accept that. Or three. Four three is lower. Don't think about it too long, or it looks like you're making something up. But they're going to say, just to make sure that they have a chance, um, it's a five four now. Five four. I'll accept that. Five four. Comes around to A. They think B was probably lying. 5-4? No, I'm going to call your bluff. It's a 4-3. C loses their last life, and they're out of the game. Now it's just between A and B. Now, normally, the pass would go back to C as the last one to have it before calling the bluff, but now there's only two players, so it goes back around to B, who has to roll. It's Mia again, 2-1. This time, player number one decides to go for it. They call it a 3-3. Three, three. Back over. Is it a 3-3? Three, three? A decides, no, I know I don't think it is. They're trying to force me to roll something higher so they can call me out and get me to lose a life. I'm gonna say, no, it's wrong. It's Mia. It's 2-1. As I mentioned before, instead of 1, that player is going to lose 2 lives because Mia what was, was what was actually rolled. With 1 life remaining, B is the winner. That's how the game is played. Now, as I've described it, that is a winner-take-all, a simple game to a single winner. Now, it could be played just as easily like that in gambling, where the lives lost are considered your ante into the pot, and the winner then takes all of the other coins, all of the lost lives. Alternately, you could have a central pot into which everybody puts an ante, and then the winner just takes that pot. And there are other variations, which I won't take the time to get into here, where each time someone passes or re-rolls, they put in more and they can decide whether to continue the same bid or raise, especially if they're trying to roll higher, they could raise the pot just like in poker. Uh, I'll leave that to your other reading. Now, in closing, you can see why this would be a popular game. It's fairly easy to describe once you have the idea, really easy to play, and it expands to any number of players. So I hope you'll give it a try sometime when you're sitting around the table or a campfire. But a good game to you, whatever you play.